there. There were so many signs that God was trying to send me that this was not your person, and I just ignored every single one. Hey beautiful people, how you all doing today? It's your girl Destiny here and welcome back to my channel. How you all doing? Hope you guys are doing great. So today's video is who the F did I have kids with? Okay, I felt like uh, Mr. Tisa has really opened this window of where people are sharing in depth of their trauma, their story and I'm here for it. Anyway guys, this story is the story of a black man who came to share his story about who the F did he have children with. This black man shared a kid with his partner, uh, shared two kids with his partner and he went on to share a story by giving us a backstory of how they met, how their relationship progressed in eventually and everything. And this story, I find this story very interesting because this story has gotten a lot of people talking on the internet. It has gone viral, almost like the Risa Tisa story, okay? So he went on to talk about how he how they met and then they went they were struggling young people and all that, how they've able to grow over the years. So apparently they met in high school, they were best friends in high school, decided to date. And this story had a whole ups and downs because there was transitioning involved in it because the um the lady involved because it was a male and female um dynamic the lady involved later transitioned to a male and then later transitioned back to a female which is really interesting because I've, that kind of story is really rare to see but it was very interesting to um know the dynamic of the relationship and how it plays out and then with the children and all that i posted a video about how a lady was talking about the person you choose to share your life with says a lot about you and i feel like this story just really depicts that because this man was sharing a whole lot of in-depth of some of the things he took because he didn't know who he is and he didn't love himself enough which i find very very interesting and all that anyway guys let's go check out this video this man telling the story then we'll come back and talk but let me know what you think about this story down in the comment section feel free to share your thoughts as always and subscribe to the channel if you haven't okay because there's going to be a part one a part two and a part three so you want to subscribe so that you catch up to it the story is very long so you want to subscribe to this channel anyway guys let's go check it out then we'll come back and talk more my intention in this following video series is to explain the truth about what happened in my life over the past two years explain truthfully who my kids bio parent is and i'm going to be talking about the trail of destruction that they left behind a lot of you on social media know my ex as a man they were female to male transgender you may know that i paid for her top surgery what you don't know yet is that she has since detransitioned so in this story i will be using she her pronouns to still maintain being respectful of that i'm also going to be changing the names in this story as to protect myself so that i don't get sued this story is very complex and will be told in parts so please be patient with me. I know that I don't have to address anything that I don't want to, but I put so much of my family out on social media that I want to give you guys an explanation as to why she's no longer in the children's lives. I wanna give you an explanation as to what caused the deterioration of the relationship. It's my hope that telling my story will not only help me heal from the years of trauma that she put me through and my family through, but also help somebody else who may be going through a similar situation or the same thing. Before we get into this series, I want to let you know that the topics we will be discussing are very messy and very real. I'm going to be discussing the entirety of our relationship, including the times I got cheated on, an emotional court case against an SA or and the missing persons. I'm going to be talking about how I was betrayed, lied to, manipulated, and repeatedly ghosted by somebody I thought was my life partner. Because of her, I spent a year of my life in the court system trying to protect my children against her boyfriend. For over a year, she repeatedly tried to put my children in a toxic environment. And for over half of my life, she used me every chance she got and then traded me in whenever there was a better option. There are several twists and turns in this story, so I'm going to be telling it in parts just because there's a lot of information to dissect. Okay. Last thing I want to mention before getting started on this, this I guess, expose, I'm imploring the court to change their system because there were way too many failures that y'all had while I was trying to get custody of my kids and protect my kids away from the of children. Thank you guys for your patience and get ready. Who the did I have kids with? 
part one. Before we get started, I wanna mention that I recorded part of this video using real names. So you'll be hearing bleeps throughout parts of the video, but moving forward, you'll be hearing me use those changed names. To my trans followers who know my ex as a man, I want to mention this. She has since detransitioned, so I will be using she, her pronouns to maintain respect of that. If you wanna find out more, watch the series, we'll get there. There were so many signs that God was trying to send me that this was not your person, and I just ignored every single one. Me and my ex met in 10th grade, and her name was Jessica at the time, which is important because her name will change throughout this story as will her gender and will her pronouns. I told you this is going to be a very complex story. A little something about me, when I'm in a relationship with a person, that's my person. You know what I'm saying? I'm done. So in 10th grade, I was out the game. When I fall, I fall hard. I thought that she was the same exact type of person. I was wrong because not only five months later, did she cheat on me for the first time. When she brought it up to me, she told me that the only reason she cheated was because a mutual friend pushed her to do it. Remember that. That first time getting cheated on was excruciating because the friend who convinced her to cheat, she car accident the next day on the way to school. So for the longest time, I didn't have any closure as to what truthfully like really, really happened. To make matters worse, Jessica didn't tell me about the cheating until about four months after our mutual friend passed. So to this day, I have no idea if she actually pushed her to cheat or if Jessica just blamed it on a person. I have no idea. That's not on me to say that I want any explanation or I want accountability to be taken. I don't. It more so points to how I felt about myself in that particular moment. I had no self-love. I was very much insecure and I felt that Without her, I wouldn't have anybody. The lesson that I believe God was teaching me was to treat yourself better and to have higher standards for yourself. But did I listen? When I trust, I trust hard. So after some healing, we finally had some conversations and I sat down and I forgave her because I genuinely thought that she wasn't going to cheat on me again. That thought did not last long. Next year of our relationship was good, you know, as far as high school relationships are concerned. We write notes back and forth, naming our future children. May of 2010 rolls around and she just breaks up with me. Not only did she break up with me, she broke up with me via Kelly Clarkson song lyrics. The song Already Gone by Kelly Clarkson haunted my mind for years. Minutes after Jessica broke up with me, she posted the song lyrics on Facebook. Let that sink in. I never felt embarrassment like that because all of my friends at the time were asking me what happened, what happened because everybody knew we were dating. At the time I was struggling with feelings of not being enough. So I asked her just straight to her face, what happened? Why am I not enough? Why did you not choose me? She told me she just needed time to herself to figure things out. Three days later, she gets into a relationship with a girl named Katie. A couple things, first off, what do we know about a person when they get out of a relationship and get into one in a very short amount of time? Y'all was already talking beforehand. Second thing I want you to remember, this is the second time now that she has traded me in for somebody else because she wanted something better. When we broke up, I was devastated. One, because she had left me for a woman. So I, my, my ego took a huge hit. I had no idea how to recover from that. Additionally, I had a really bad home life and I'll go in depth on that on another series, but her family very much represented a safe space for me and they took me in very much like blindside with Michael Orr. We broke up, I didn't have that safe space anymore. So I very much spent the rest of that summer and leading into the fall, sad and single and suffering under the that my mother was putting me through. Let's fast forward to winter, junior year. At this point in time, my home life has gotten so bad that a social worker from the school comes to the house and tells me that I have to stay someplace else or she will place me somewhere. Guess who stepped up for me in a time of need? Jessica's parents, Tom and Sarah. Get to the house and Aww. Tom tells the social worker, I don't want Moses to be put in the system. And at least this way he'll be around his family and in the same school district. I'm forever grateful for those two because you two saved my life in a time that I needed it and you did not know. Thank you. At this point in time, me and Jessica are now living together under the same roof as her parents and her three sisters. She comes downstairs the first night I'm there to tell me that she and her girlfriend are not working out and that she misses me. You know, and at that point, I was feeling real good because the person that you left me for is not working out with. Mm. She continues on discussing the problems that she's having in her relationship. And she says that her girlfriend doesn't respect her because she identifies as something called trans. If you've been living under a rock and don't know what being trans is, it's basically being born in the opposite gender's body. She told me that a lot of stuff started to make sense because she had always been very tomboy. So I was just easily accepting of that. Later that night, we hooked up and they stayed together for another week before breaking up. Please, please treat yourself better than I did because about a week after Jessica and her girlfriend split up, I got back with her. 
She made promise after promise that she would never leave me, that she was never gonna cheat on me again. And I truthfully believed her. When I trust, I trust hard. It was around January of 2011, which was our senior year. Keep this in mind. That January, she comes out to the school and she tells everybody that she wants to be called a different name, James. It is also important to note that she was still using she, her pronouns at this time. By April of 2011, our counselor told us both that we were both didn't have enough credits to graduate and that we would have to do another year. We were both like, if we're going to do it, let's do it together. Let's graduate. Fast forward to April of 2012. We were filling out college applications. We applied to several colleges, but none of them would take us due to our low GPA until Shawnee State University. We both applied to Shawnee State, but I was the only one who got an acceptance letter. Here's the crazy thing. Despite my toxic home life, my mother actually agreed to sign off on the papers to take out loans for me to go to Shawnee State University. My home life was so bad that at one point I tried to commit just to get out of my circumstances. And I'm so glad that it was a failed attempt. But it, just to give you some context, it was finally my chance to get out. I sit down and I talk with Jessica about it. And I was still calling her Jessica at this point in time because she was still not out to her family. I told her that I got accepted and I told her that I wanted to go because I could stay on campus and I, could, I finally had that chance to get out. She made me feel as though if I went, we would break up. Intentionally or unintentionally, that is a guilt trip and I want y'all to know that. I had such an abandonment wound and a fear of being alone that I chose not to go to school for her. After we graduated high school, we enrolled in Tri-C, which is Cuyahoga Community College. It was the only college that would accept both of us. That being said, I had to stay at home instead of living on campus. That being said, my home life suffered. That being said, my grades suffered. I was on the verge of dropping out of college as a freshman just because I didn't have the wherewithal to be able to keep up with my classes. And Jessica comes to me and she tells me that she applies to something called the Disney College Program. The Disney College Program offered students a chance to live on their campus while working and earning college credit. I did not like Disney at the time, but I saw this as my way out. She had already told me that she got accepted, which means that if I didn't get accepted, she was just going to leave which was ironic because that's exactly the thing that she didn't want me to do to her by going to Shawnee State. The program only selected a certain number of students, so I applied to the easiest job that I knew that they were hiring for, housekeeping. Shout out to the housekeepers. That job was hard. I got fired. I'll talk about that in separate story time, but the funny thing is, she actually got fired one week before I did. Now, the Disney College program mandates that if you get fired, you have 24 to 48 hours to vacate the premises. So when she got fired, I saved up all of my money and I put her up in a hotel for a week because she had no idea or no way to get back to Ohio. I was so tired from going back and forth from my job to her hotel and I already didn't have any money. My work started to slip. The day that I got fired, Jessica calls to tell me that her aunt is going to be driving her up from Florida to Ohio. I remember I have 24 hours to vacate the premises, so I was like, come pick me up. She picks me up and we drive back up from Florida to Ohio, which means I am now back in the same circumstances that I escaped from back at my mom's house. I was desperately looking for more ways out when I finally came across another option, Cedar Point, which actually led me to getting cheated on again. Who the I have kids with? Part two, trigger warning, this story contains P3DOs, a miss and trans sensitive topics. Cedar Point had a similar program where you work for them and then you can live on campus. So I saw this as another opportunity to escape. I applied to be a lifeguard. She applied to be a racetrack attendant. We moved out of our houses and we moved into the Cedar Point dorms and into our respective jobs. Jessica's career in racetrack lasted about one month before she switched to lifeguarding because she said that it was because she missed me. June of 2013, she gets approved for the transfer to lifeguarding. June of 2013, we break up. She broke up with me via text message and then texted me that she was sending her friend to my dorm to go pick up her stuff. I was blindsided and embarrassed because you just transferred here for me and then you break up with me. And we were very much the it couple. So everybody knew we were together. So again, everybody's asking questions. I had no explanation for them. For the next three days, we avoided each other at work like the plague. But at the end of that third day, she texted me that she wants me back and she wants to work on things. She wants to talk things out. I was still confused and didn't even have time to process the breakup. What she told me during our talk was that she developed a crush on my boss who was in a relationship and she felt guilty about it. So she wanted to break up with me so that she could have time to process her feelings. I was a 19 year old kid who was scared and insecure about the world and she was the only safe space for me. I was so broken inside and fearful of what could happen if I was without her. So I took her back. 
only to find out that a month later, she broke up with me, shot her shot, got rejected by him because he's again in a relationship, and then she pivoted back to me. Fast forward to fall of 2013. We moved out of the Cedar Point dorms and into our own apartment. I was working full time, paying all of the bills. She did not have a job. You will see that this was a theme throughout our relationship. I was the one supporting her. 2013 was a terrible year for me because I got cheated on twice in that year and twice in that apartment. It's fall of 2013. Mind you, Jessica is an avid gamer. This is important for this part of the story. At the time I was working full time, 12 hour shifts from midnight to noon. As I'm heading out to work, it's 11.55 p.m. I'm walking out the door and four guys walk into my house saying that they're going to start playing games with Jessica. Trigger warning, some of these stories include domestic situations, missing persons, trans sensitive topics, and cheating. Who the f did I have kids with? 2013 was a terrible year for me because I got cheated on twice in that year and twice in that apartment. Jessica is an avid gamer. This is important for this part of the story. At the time I was working full time, 12 hour shifts from midnight to noon. As I'm heading out to work, it's 11.55 p.m. I'm walking out the door and four guys walk into my house saying that they're going to start playing games with Jessica. When I trust, I trust hard. I leave, go to work, come home, unaware of anything happening. About a month goes by and our relationship starts deteriorating like we just fight and we're not getting along and we were best friends at the time so this is very uncharacteristic of us she breaks down crying one night and she tells me she breaks down one night and she tells me that she cheated with the brother of one of the friends that she was gaming with she told me that she was alone in a car with him one night and that he pressured her into it she told me that she felt that she had no choice and i believed it for a variety of reasons Reason number one, I was raised by a single mother. She always told me to believe a woman in any situation because more often than not, she's telling the truth. Reason number two, Jessica was a victim of child Her neighbor was one of the biggest P3DOs in the state of Ohio's history, and he had an entire catalog. She was one of his favorite victims. He actually went on Oprah to describe her experiences and what it was like living next to this man. Combine all of that together, it made sense when she told me that she felt like she had to. I told her as long as she never talks to the dude again, that I could forgive her. She cut ties with him and we moved on as a happy couple, or so I thought. May of 2014, the following year, I got cheated on again. After Jessica cheated on me for the fourth time, I took her back. I know you may be thinking, why did I do that? I didn't have any value in myself. I was afraid to find out who I was without her and I placed her over myself. I very much saw her as family, as an extension of me and you don't leave family behind was very much my thought process. Fast forward to October 27th, 2016. We have our first son. From 2014 to 2016, we our relationship was good. There was no cheating that I knew of. We were solid and our family was finally whole, complete. At the time when my son was born, we were paying 450 a month in rent living in Elyria, Ohio. Elyria is poverty. I'm not playing. Like my downstairs neighbors literally got I'm pretty sure the roaches were high. I was working full time and going to school full time, busting to try to provide for my family because again, Jessica was not working. I wanted to afford her the ability to be able to stay home, to raise the kids and I'll be the one that's working. That was the life that she wanted. So that was the life that I wanted to provide for her. I grinded as hard as I possibly could for that next year. And I was so proud of myself because I got a 3.8, I made Dean's List, and I proved to myself that my circumstances in high school and the first time in college were not gonna be this time. February 6th of 2018, we have another major life event, the birth of my second son, Jalen. I'm stressed, worried, and anxious about how am I gonna be able to take care of two children on a Papa John salary while working full time in school. That is when we got a very interesting call from her aunt. Jessica's aunt tells her that she's going to give her, Jalen, Moses Jr., and myself $15,000 each to do whatever we want with. It was a huge blessing and took us completely by surprise because her aunt was racist. It was just a, a fact within the family. Her aunt, the same aunt that drove us up from Florida, she told us that she saw how hard our lives were, so she wanted to do anything that she could to help us out. So when we took that money, it was $60,000, and we bought a house. We bought our first house in June of 2018. Remember that though, that is a significant milestone. Move in, things are going great. I apply to nursing school and get in on the first try, which is very difficult for any nursing students that know. October 29th, I get approved for weight loss surgery. So this year it was shaping up to be amazing until I got cheated on again. Now fall of 2018 and Jessica is gaining a following on this app called TikTok. She's going live every night, making a bunch of friends. And at this time, I had no idea what it is. I did not have social media at all whatsoever, which is very ironic. It was late December, an 
and our relationship started to fall apart. And she said that it was because I was working too much and going to school too much. I was literally working full time to support our family because she wasn't working. So she broke up with me. Next week, the live stream started to get a lot more flirty. Now, mind you, I was a broke college student. I was not, I didn't have any money to go anywhere and we just bought this house. So she took the upstairs, I took the downstairs. It only been broken up for a week and I was trying to get her back because based on our history, we would break up and then get right back together. So that's what I thought was about to happen again. We were only broken up for a week when she told me that there was no chance of us getting back together again because she's starting to fall for this girl that she met on the lives named Stephanie. A week later, they started dating. Now, what do we know when you start dating somebody directly after a breakup? Y'all was already talking beforehand. To twist the knife even further. She said that Stephanie gave her the courage to come out fully. Jessica then tells me that she wants me to call her James now and call her he, him pronouns. So from now on throughout this point in the story, I will be referring to her as him and Jessica as James. Keep up. I was so heartbroken because I had done nothing but try to support them and encourage their transition. So to hear somebody else getting credit for it felt very much like a low blow. James then goes on and informs me that he wants the children to call him dad instead of mom. I had felt like my entire world got upended because not only did I just lose my significant other, not only did I just lose my life partner, but I lost my best friend at the same time. I felt like everything I was working for, everything that I was sacrificing for was just for no reason, just evaporated almost overnight. I was so low and depressed that that night I went downstairs and I started writing letters. I wrote a letter to my mom. I wrote a letter to my brothers and I wrote a letter to my sons and I wrote a letter to James himself addressing why I will no longer be here and moving forward what I want with the kids. Throughout everything that I had been through in my life and then including with them just in general, I couldn't take it anymore. I remember bawling my eyes out while writing those letters, literally tears falling on the paper when the craziest thing happened and the biggest blessing that I believe in my entire life. I was in the middle of my second son's letter, the final letter when i just woke up i had no recollection of falling asleep i just woke up and i thank god to this day that i'm still here I woke up like six in the morning that morning and i saw the letter still on my lap i stood up walked over to the trash can i threw them away god told me i got more to live for that day i downloaded tiktok the next month i tried to get back with james but he told me that he was madly in love with Stephanie and that there was no shot. I was heartbroken at first, but I eventually found acceptance in it. And then I even thought as far as if this is going to be a person that's in your life, then let me try to, you know, develop a relationship with them. So I started actually talking to Stephanie. Remember that. I found out that Stephanie was actually pretty cool. So I was so accepting of their relationship. About a month after, Stephanie breaks up with James. Stephanie says, I'm sorry, I'm just not into trans people. James, my baby daddy, is now upset and distraught because everything that he wanted with this girl is now just been taken away. What do you think James did? You're right, tried to come back to me. At this point in time, I was so riddled with trust issues that I did not want them back, but they still were my best friend at the time. And we, I was still a broke college student, so I didn't have any money to move out. We decided to stay in the same house together, raise the kids as dad and dad dad, and remain best friends. In May of 2019, I was so stressed out from the pressure of providing for my family because I was not working enough hours to adequately provide, but I was also working too many hours to provide adequate attention to my nursing studies. These were people's lives. So I had to drop my classes. Dropped out with a 3.8 and it was the hardest thing that I ever had to do because I really wanted to graduate. I really wanted to provide better for my family, but I knew that this was the decision that I had to make. So I picked up more hours at Papa John's. Still, I was the only one working. In June of 2019, something magical happened. I started to blow up on TikTok. I started to gain a huge following telling the stories of the things that I lived through, just the events that have happened in my life. By the end of 2019, I had like two or three million followers. I started opening up and talking more about my family dynamic because now we were a family of two dads, two single dads, raising two children together. Crazy. Huh? Crazy, 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 crazy. Let me know what you think about the story so far and let me know like your take so far in the story. There's going to be a part two of the story. So, mm, 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 mm. Like, I can't use it because this story is over an hour long and for me it's really interesting. But there are some notes I picked out from the story. So I want to know your own thoughts so far about the story down in the comment section. But please keep it respectful. You are on this channel. We're allowed to disagree but we do it in a respectful way. So feel free to share your thoughts.
So some of the things I picked out from this is one is that first this relationship was started it started young and they both grew up together like it's almost like puppy love high school love and they both grew up together and I feel like that has a lot of um codependent issues especially coming from someone me I've been with my partner since I was like 20, 19, 20 years old. So I have a long-time partner who, who is now my husband. So I feel like I, I know that connection when you feel that connection with someone and you've grown that long together, living that person is usually hard. Like no matter what they do, you always want to take them back. Because I know some people will say, oh, so why do you keep taking them back? da 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 Sometimes when you feel that strong connection with someone or you feel like that person is the family, especially when your family dynamic is really disturbing and you're trying to escape, but either mentally, physically, and that one person is a safe space for you, sometimes it's hard for you to even see any other person around. So I really get that um, part of the story, but I find the story very interesting and I still want to watch more of this and know more about the story. But another thing I got is that when you are traumatized and this is something we talk about here a lot on this channel is that do the work like you can be in a relationship with someone and claim you love someone when you've not done the work and love yourself because when you love yourself it's a whole different ball game like the way you approach things the way you set boundaries the way you handle things is really different but i'm not putting blame on anybody i know that but and lastly before i go i also want to point out having children when you are broke college student like why and this is the reason i always say that when it comes to children or being with someone or getting married ask yourself those dif difficult questions like why are you doing it like what is the reason what was the reason like ask yourself all that because why are you having first baby let's even say first baby was a mistake so why are you having a second baby when you know you can't afford it and your partner is not working that's just so messed up like i just can't even phantom why why would you even do that anyway guys let me know what you think about this story so far down in the comment section so um part two video is going to be next so you want to watch out and this is one of the reasons you should subscribe to this channel okay so you catch up with the sweet g story times okay anyway guys go on in the comment section and share your thoughts love to know what you think about this conversation down in the comment section but please keep it respectful Go on and share this video with somebody that you want to be part of the conversation because that's what we do here. We are banging conversation. So go ahead and share this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, smash the like button because this helps YouTube to put my content for more people to see. And that will be you supporting this channel and this girl, yeah? With that all said, guys, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, you want to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Deucey!